In a culture of wild political correctness, Echo of Fidelity brings you godly content in a godless world. From thought-provoking interviews to inspirational stories of saints and heroes, this show is always deeply rooted in Catholic tradition. This is Echo of Fidelity. Hi, my name is Matthew Miller. I'm with TFP Student Action, and I'm your host. Remember, if you're watching this show on YouTube, you can go over to iTunes and download the audio version of this podcast. I'm going to be putting a link in the description below. All right, let's get on with the show. What is Organic Christian Society, and why is it even important? Today, I'm going to be asking Mr. John Horvath II, who wrote the book Return to Order, after spending 20 years of researching and writing about this topic. John Horvath II is a scholar, researcher, educator, international speaker, and author. His writings have appeared worldwide, including in the Wall Street Journal, The Christian Post, American Thinker, Crisis Magazine, Fox News, and The Washington Times, as well as other publications. He gives more than 150 radio and TV interviews annually. Mr. Horvath, thank you so much for coming on. Great to have you. It's great to be on. So what is your short sort of elevator speech for the book Return to Order. Yes, I would say that the book Return to Order is a book that helps you understand better where we went wrong in our culture and in our economy. And then it gives you the elements to see where we need to go, especially from a Catholic perspective, because the church has a lot to offer in this particular regard. I mean, so often we know where we don't want to go. You know, we don't want abortion. We don't want same-sex marriage. We don't want socialism. Uh, this is a book that says where we do want to go, especially in the lines of organic Christian society, uh, natural leaderships, and um, the practice of virtue in the faith. Back in 2013 when I, when I got the book, I was pretty scared of it because I thought it was going to be this long economical research, but I found over time that there was a really beautiful chapter on the sublime and that the whole book was just really accessible, wouldn't you say that? It is a book that is very accessible. You know, when you say, you say it's a book about economy, people just all of a sudden say, economy, what's that? Well, it, economy, it does deal with economy, but I'm not an economist. I don't, I don't have studies in economy, but it does deal with very basic aspects of economy and, and religion and sociology and all these, all these other uh, categories. For the most part, I've had people from all walks of life that have liked the book or have commented on the book and have at least understood it. So I, I think it is a very accessible book and for anyone who's really interested in this subject. Now, Organic Christian Society, that is a term that I don't know if everybody understands. Could you explain that term? Right. Organic Christian Society is, is a society that's based on the God-given institutions of family, faith, and community. And these are institutions that help keep a society in balance. They help in the practice of virtue. They are very much according to our human nature. It's not something that's forced or imposed upon a people. It's very largely based on uh, the role of leadership, the, lead the role of the family as a, as a social institution and unit, and economic unit as well. And so this organic Christian society is basically society as it should be and as God designed it to be. Which books or authors inspired you the most to write Return to Order? Hmm. Well, obviously the, the first book would be that of my own mentor, Professor Plinio Correa de Rivera. He actually was very instrumental in, in uh, getting together people and resources to, um, to come up with this book and the ideas of this book. And so his book, Re Revolution and Counter-Revolution, was a model for this book. It was an application of his book to the American situation. Could you explain frenetic intemperance? Because it's a really key element in the book. Uh, frenetic intemperance is an expression I coined uh, to describe uh, how our society gets out of balance. It's this tendency that's specially found in economy where everyone has to have everything now, instantly, regardless of the consequences, and how this frenetic activity that's very much seen in our markets uh, is, what's, is what throws society out of balance and has given rise to so many of the problems, not only economic problems, but cultural problems we have today. Well, a lot of people listening to this podcast may be wondering how can we avoid frenetic intemperance in our daily lives? Well, definitely there are ways in which you can avoid this frenetic intemperance. 
Uh, one is simply to slow down. <laughs> Slowing down does, it definitely uh, gets people thinking or to not to have so many electronic devices or be so uh, engaged in your electronic devices. Um, but many times it is the mere institutions themselves, the, the living of a, of a life of virtue, a living a life of the family. Um, all these are very, um, um, very important ways in which we can avoid the frenetic intemperance of just doing it, what you want to, whenever you want to, wherever you want to. Now, I've heard you talk about the Benedict Option. What's your opinion on Rod Dreher's The Benedict Option? Well, The Benedict Option is a book that says that modern society is, is very, uh, makes it very difficult for people to practice their faith. And I would definitely agree with that. But I would also disagree because it's not impossible. Uh, what Rod Dreher says is that people need to get together in, 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 in communities of all types but he uses the comparison of the ark, that we should gather together in ark-like structures and ride out the storm, the modern day storm, the immorality that's in society today. And there, here I would definitely disagree because I, I don't think it's, it is an option. That the, the modern day mora immorality will not leave us alone. We cannot escape from it. It's not something that can be, uh, that, that it needs to be dealt with. It needs to be confronted. The best way to deal with the modern day culture is to confront and engage that culture. And this is pretty much what St. Benedict did. St. Benedict, uh, according to Rod Dreher, withdrew from society and formed his monasteries and later came back and, and built, uh, built culture. But that's not exactly what happened. St. Benedict went to uh, build his major monastery, Monte Cassino, in one of the very populated areas of Italy. And he engaged the culture. He overthrew the, the idols on the, in, the, in the temples. He, he burned one of their sacred forests. He, he taught the, 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 the people around their catechism and preached. So he was very, very much engaged in the culture. And, and so I think we need to follow his example. If there's anyone who did not practice the Benedict Option, I think it was St. Benedict himself. Definitely the, the focus of modern society is a materialistic focus and it teaches that everything is simply matter and there really is no, there are no really spiritual aspects of life. And I think that's where we've gone wrong in our society. That's what creates the frenetic intemperance of our times. It is a, it's an obsession with material things that can never satisfy. And that man is a, uh, a being with both body and soul. And as a result, the body, bodily needs are taken care of with material things. But the, so, the spiritual things are, need to be addressed. Uh, and if they're not addressed, we become frustrated and we become depressed and we become uh, like so many in society today. They're, they're not able to cope with uh, living in our, in our days. Thank you so much for joining us here on Echo of Fidelity. If you want to visit our website, go over to tfpstudentaction.org. Godspeed. <laughs>